What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Over Greggy Show. I am one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. We'll get in there. Hold on. I wouldn't. He was, he was clenched oh. tight. Now it's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to work it in. You can't just fucking well, I, throw I, it in as there, As I was bro. jabbing, I remember that I need to cut. I'm like right on the border of needing to cut my nails. No. If I cut them now, I feel like they'll be too short. You know what I mean? And then they yeah. hurt and they like they sting for a couple mm. days. Or you don't like that. that. What, what does the length of your nails have to do with... I was jabbing it into Nick's... No, I'm not saying that, but what does the length of your nails have to do with you cutting them to make them short? If the la- nail- nails go longer, then you don't cut them shorter? That doesn't make any sense. I'm saying right now, I don't think it's time to cut them, but I think we're almost there. Probably tomorrow. So you... He's trying to avoid... They have I think to right now they're not too... To cut sh- they're not too long right now. You could ride it out a little bit longer. They're not too long. I sympathize with him. I, don't, I guess I just don't get because it. Because if you cut them when they're too short, you run the risk of cutting too close to the cuticle, yeah. and then it get, like fucking stings every time yep. you touch it. Yeah, right? I hate that. I hate so that. I like to let I it go a little too long. And then I, yeah. Then, yeah. I did that with the thumb. Because it's like it's the, the clipper, not a precision instrument. No, it's not. But you know? what I'm Women's clippers. Here's what I keep thinking You need to get the, they're so much better. They're like fucking utility, they're like tools. What somebody needs to come up with, and I've thought about this, and this is now acts as my trademark on this, pure one, Tim Gettys. Yes. Pride along on, I call Moriarty, is that if we could invent some kind of acid or microbe that you put into a fluid that eats the dead part of the fingernail. So I just dunk mm. them in there and they go, ang, 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 ang. and then they just, I got my fingernails all set. You're a fucked up person. That'd Greg. be perfect. Like, think about how you've thought, Have you thought about this before? Or did you just write? Oh now? no, no, I've thought about this a lot. Good lord. I'd, and then I can get it for Portillo's nails too, because those motherfuckers. All right, monsters. so let me just ask this again, because what you're saying still doesn't make any sense. I understand what you're saying. The, the <laughs> you cut your nails how long ago? I don't know. Whenever I needed to. There's no schedule. Let's say a it's when week I, need I don't, I don't okay. say there's a schedule. Well, let's say a week ago. Sure. And they were at a good length at that time. They were too short then. They hurt. I hurt my nail. I'm, I'm gun shy right now. This thumb hurt for a long time. I cut it too short. All right. Then let's just drop the issue. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Game Over Greggy Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each bring a random topic of conversation for your amusement. If you like that, Head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can get each and every episode early along with exclusive episodes and a bunch of cool perks. If you have no bucks to toss us on patreon.com slash kind of funny, head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny where the entire show posts topic by topic, day by day until the entire thing is free as one big MP3 and one big video. I think that was the most solid this table we've ever done. It was like perfectly in unison. I feel like this is going to be one of the best shows we've ever done. Okay. Just letting you know. Good. Yeah, this is, is this one. This is worth worth the dollar. the dollar. Oh man, I feel good. Mm. You all seem like you feel good. I feel good. Kevin feels good. He's in a good Superman shirt over there. He's drinking hot coffee. He learned that he likes hot coffee. I appreciate you. I'm gonna begin the festivities. Let's do it. Now, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can support us on Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny, and if you go to a certain level, you can support us and get your topic right on the show today. I'm blowing dust off in a topic that was given to us a long, long time ago, but has never been read or done. Oh, my God. It comes from the one and only Mike Drucker. Mike Drucker. Mike Drucker writes in, and I said, what's your topic? And Mike Drucker said, music quiz. Can Colin name the NES game music based, uh, NES game based on music alone? Start easy and get real hard. Yeah, I Mike know, Drucker. I know how. My so, prediction is that Colin's going to fucking nail this. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Out of 100. Now, yeah. No, I, I, I don't. I don't there's one thing I know about for Colin. Everyone he to starts play. hard. Okay. I, don't think, I don't think I'm going to do as well on this as you think. Wait, now, is he asking us to play the music and Colin has to name the game? Yes. Okay. We play the music. Okay. You listen to the music. You name the game. Oh, we all have to play. I, well, I gave you all markers in a, in a in note card now, for can a I ask this question? Are you fucking stupid? Can I, yeah. I, can I ask you this question? Is this Does this game have a tremendous amount of kind of like... Really creepy white people that we could look at, like the pictures of, like Chad oh, and Chester and like Heartthrob. We gotta, oh, get, back heartthrob. Heartthrob. We gotta get back to Heartthrob. We gotta do oh, okay. a let's play of Heartthrob. And, um, and okay. What? I love the smell of a sharpie. Oh yeah, I mean, it's too. like gasoline. You shouldn't, but it's, but you have it's to. Good. There's some yeah, part of your brain that says, "Hey, hey, kids." <laughs> Let's get super high off this thing. <laughs> Don't listen to your parents. Listen to your boy Colin M. No, I didn't say that you should do it. I'm just saying <laughs> that it smells, a Sharpie smells good. It does smell good. Now, All right. Mike's topic mm-hmm. was play NES music, have Colin name the games. I'm expanding it to Tim and Nick because I want them to be a part of it. I but as you that. may know, viewer and or listener out there, and of course Colin knows well, I'm Greg Miller. I was unfortunately raised a Sega kid. I don't have the affinity, the knowledge to go through and really take Colin to the limit. To the I'm Glass library. Joe. I needed 
a Mike Tyson for this punch mm, out. Mm, mm, mm. So what I did is I reached out to our friend Andre from youtube.com slash black nerd comedy, black nerd comedy dot com. And I had him submit videos for Ke for Colin and you all to get tested. He's a big on. Nintendo guy. He is. He's a huge Nintendo guy. Well, this is exciting. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to compete today. Luckily, I always I like bring to keep it. you on your toes. <laughs> so are we doing, we're writing the answers on, uh, we're going to use a bunch of index cards. Right, right. I have a whole bunch here. So the idea here is that, yes, you will write your answer down. You will let Andre go the entire time. He's made these videos for you. Okay. Oh my God. And for you, of course. You get to see him here. Thank you, Andre, for helping, by the way. Um, so I'll, we'll do that. You let it play out until he says, what's your answer? And okay. then we'll show each other what we said. What are you doing? Greg is a boner. <laughs> this is a wasted card. You write on the back of it now. Oh, man. I hate Don't what I share answers. Cards. No, I Don't can't. Don't share it's answers. Like, I'm seeing the imprint of what I wrote on the front I'm probably of the not going to do very well here. Don't share answers, I Andre's said. Andre is like, you know... Legit. Yeah. I mean, I am legit too, I think, but maybe not as legit. Now, it's don't share legit. answers. And I'm talking specifically to you because both these people will cheat off of you. Okay. And I will let you know that as Andre, blacknerdcomedy.com. Remember this in school? Yeah, of course. Is a huge <laughs> Nintendo yes, fan. He's, <laughs> he's wanting <laughs> specifics. Okay. So See, levels. He, no, well, he put them in parentheses, but I'm I, just the okay. game is Mike okay. Drucker. Okay. So I need the okay. game. So give me like if it's a sequel, I need the numeral. Is it first okay. party and third party? Let's find it's, out. It's both. Okay, good. It's not just first part. All right. All right. All right. So here we go. Super Mario Brothers. Cranking this up. My prediction. Start easy and get hard. I'm going to do the worst <laughs> out of all of you on this. I hope you do the best. That'd be hilarious. Like, Kevin. I really loved any of it. Three, two, one, go. Did somebody say Nintendo? <laughs> What's up? It's Andre. I'm on the YouTube and stuff. Okay. Uh, my YouTube channel is Black Nerd Comedy. I have a YouTube channel, but who doesn't have a YouTube channel nowadays, right? <laughs> Oversaturation. <laughs> I'm here because the kind of funny guys contacted me because y'all needed some Nintendo help. So I have here the 10 songs that I chose to play for you to try to guess. I'm going to play snippets of classic NES background music. I'm pretty sure that playing these songs on your video will definitely give you a copyright claim from Nintendo. That's all right though, we're gonna have fun. For every Thank one you. that you get right, uh, Greg has to give you a Kit Kat bar. So Greg, go out and buy a bunch of Kit Kat bars. Fuck you. I, will owe them. I will owe them to you. Answer because Kit Kats are awesome. For everyone yeah. you get Give wrong, uh, I magically take a year off your life. Jesus. If you get all 10 right, <laughs> you are officially a presidential candidate. Okay, here we go. First one, get ready. Here it is, play. See, he did that funny thing. I like the what is it he does at the end. Can I just let him? Can I have this one moment? I'm sorry. I'm not criticizing people's art. It seems like you it's are fine. criticizing right, people's art. Hold on. It's fine. I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do that. All right. So now we're going to go through. Nick Scarpino wrote down Super Mario Brothers 15. <laughs> Didn't know which one it was. So close. Well, that, that doesn't count. <clears throat> that does count. No. It does count. No, I'm telling okay, you. Okay, I'll wager a real guess. Super Mario Brothers. One. Wrong. Damn it. Damn it. What did you put? Is it three? Super Fuck. Mario Brothers three. Colin gets the point, and you got Super Mario. Oh, Mario three Overworld theme. Mm. Now I would appreciate next time Super, Super Mario, Mario three. Okay, I'm not gonna bust fine. your balls on that one. It's fine. Uh, the name so of the, point. I'm sorry, you're not gonna bust his balls on that, but I don't get Super Mario Brothers fifteen. Yeah, no, you don't. He that's, didn't put the Super uh, Mario Brothers. Is a whole different game. That's why they were just plumbers sitting around complaining about the fucking their wives and shit. No, nothing. Okay, it's still Overworld. Not the map thing. No, that's what it's I was the oval because in, in Mario yeah, it's referred yeah. to as over and under. All right, all right, all right. Number two, <laughs> Kevin. Three, two, one, go. All right, number two, play. Yeah. I enjoy the what is it. <laughs> I want to get to the what is it every time. Nick Scarpino said Mike Tyson's punch out. 
He's correct. Thank you. Colin Moriarty said, Mike Tyson's punch out. He is correct. Mike Tyson's punch out theme says, Tim, you are correct as well. Everybody gets a point on that one. Congratulations. Pat yourselves in the back. All right. Moving on to number three. Three, two. Oh, yeah. I can handle cards, don't I? No, it's me. Get a little hot. Just take half the stack over there, guys. Here. That's good. That's good. That's smart. That's smart. Split the world. Three, two, one. Go. Okay. Number three. Here we go. Play. <laughs> Nick Scarpino said guessing wild guess Castlevania and then in parentheses spelling <laughs> don't know how to spell Castlevania it looks like you nailed it but your handwriting all kinds of runs together mm. it is not Castlevania you are incorrect <laughs> Carl Moriarty said The Legend of Zelda Fucking he is correct Tim said The Legend of Zelda dungeon theme I like the specificity of it I try specificity you both got a point <laughs> celebrate your points god damn it not me you not guys are tied right yeah, three. And, it's three, three, and one. Fuck. So yeah, far, these are, I was gonna these write Zelda too. He said it's starting to get hard. No, I'm he said sure. Start I can't wait till we get fucking rock hard. Whoa. All right, here we go. Number four. Three, two, one, go. Okay, number four. I can't stop him. I love him too much. He's too good at dancing. Literally, Nintendo on this one's gonna be like, what really, guys? <laughs> really? <laughs> Seventeen songs. They're gonna, be clear. They're gonna have. They're gonna have some fucking war, an eternal war with them. Like who's Nick Scarpino funny? says, Super Mario Brothers two. It is Super Mario Brothers 2. You get a point on that one. Yeah, boy! Colin Moriarty says Super Mario Brothers 2. Tim says Super Mario Brothers 2 overworld theme. You Love have the specificity of it's it. It's weird the images that that conjures of me sitting on my uncle's floor just fucking wasting hours of my life. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Eating. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. I was like, pause. <laughs> Number five. Yes. Three, two, one, go. Number five. Here we go. Let the bass drop! Can we fly him here? This Do is the first have... one I'm not sure of. We have <clears throat> at all. All right. Nick Scarpino said, no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what Incorrect. that was. Incorrect. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. Call Moriarty said, Kirby's Dream World question mark. Incorrect. Nope. Oh. Tim Getty said. Don't know how to spell it. <laughs> balloon Fighter, he says. That's not the game of the game, but I didn't think. I'm going to give it to him. It's You're going to give fight. it. It's Balloon it's Fight. Fight. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have remembered that. I haven't played that game in years. So we're going to give him the game. point? We're giving yeah, him the I point. Know how to spell I'd, balloon. I'd give him the point. Okay, we're giving the point. Balloon fight was what you're looking for. I and wouldn't have no said it's spell balloon. <laughs> how many L's? How many O's? Oh, that's, I thought it was fight that you were caught up on me because you put fighter. I thought that's Yeah, I, I was just confused about that because. You got Smash caught up Bros. on balloon. Rumors. No, you nailed balloon. I mean, you ran it all together, but I think you got I balloon. I tried to do that in case you I don't remember. Like, How do you know? How do you? I mean, I played that game when I was a kid, but I haven't heard that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't heard that song. There you go. That's not an iconic one. I'm waiting for third party stuff. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm sorry. I'm waiting for third party stuff. Thank you, Kevin. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe there is no third party stuff. Maybe I was incorrect. Um, that sucks. If that's the case. Some of the most iconic music that's is why I guessed third party. <laughs> Hello. I think you're going to be okay. I think you're going to be all right. All right. Oh, actually, yeah, because here comes something. Three, two, one. Okay. Number six. <laughs> I don't know 
which one? Really? Specifically, which one? Another franchise. Sure. What is it? Yes. <laughs> 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 Nick Scarbino says burger time. <laughs> so that song means nothing to you. Uh, I was I, I, it reminded me of Animaniacs or like Looney Tunes, but I couldn't remember which okay. one. I didn't okay. know. Yeah, no, I don't know if it was a game there or not. No, it's done. Time, pencils down, Mr. Moriarty. Uh, yeah, I said Adams Family. The Adams what... Family. Incorrect. It's Tim Tiny Toon Adventures. It is, and that's, that's what I thought it was too. It but, is Tiny Toon Adventures. But I don't know which which one it was. It's just Tiny oh, Toon really? Adventures. <laughs> Damn it! That's what I fucking Got started. Lucky there. Now give me credit here. I started to I say. I see it. it. You say Tiny. There you go. And there then you I go. but then it was like the Adams Family. And oh, I was like, I could work too. Acme University. We are not right. Team I, green. Damn, damn it! I'm losing. It's yeah, okay. Right. It's okay. That's the. Where's uh, the really iconic music? God damn it! Point of clarification. Yeah, not us. Point of clarification. You're not losing. You're coming in a close second. No, I mean, I'm distant, bad. distant I'm fourth. Too, I'm too right now, Tim has six points. Colin is four, and you now, have how two. How many Kit Kats is that? Right. that I don't I, remember. I, I think it's a full bar, Kit Kat bar I have to so buy. So that's you. twenty-four Kit Kat. Kit Kats. <laughs> 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 All right, Kevin. Number seven. Three, two, one, go. All right, number seven. What is it? <laughs> He's funny. Everybody subscribe to Black Nerd Comedy. I enjoy Andre. I'm just putting it out there. Pencils down, sir. And you're just putting... Oh, okay. Spy Hunter. <laughs> Incorrect. I know it's not Spy Hunter. Incorrect. I just wanted everyone to stop and think about Spy Hunter for gotcha. a second. Great game. Colin says Ice Climbers. Incorrect. I thought that was it. Yeah, no, no, no. I put Rad Racer. I Rad don't... Racer. No we are idea. looking, ladies and gentlemen, for Donkey Kong Jr. Mm, Donkey Kong. I don't think I even played that. I wouldn't, yeah. Junior. Yeah. That's a fucking I knew it was a very cut. old like an old one. The music was so simple. I'm sorry, the music was too old. Thank you, Kevin. Number eight in three, two, one, go. Number eight. Play. Shit. Yeah, god damn it. Oh, oh. I can see why people put the NES. This one scratched the itch. What is it? What is it, Nick no Scarpino? Idea. You're close. Nick. You say Chippendales Rescue Rangers. Incorrect. But you're on the right track. Colin says Ducktales. He is correct. Fuck. Damn it. Tim says. Now what was it though? First, what? I, I, I don't know. I don't know mm. which this is. one I can't read. Tintin's Kirby's Adventure. I put Kirby's Adventure. Yeah, uh, it's Ducktales, the Amazon. The Amazon level. When you're okay. playing in the yeah. Amazon yeah. level. Yeah. Fuck. That, like, that I know I played so that game. Far into me. We are getting. I had to like. I, I appreciate that he didn't go for the moon theme because that's the obvious one. Have as you two not because you and I have nothing to say about this. Mm -hmm. Have they been getting harder? Is he doing? They a good getting, job? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm surprised of some omissions so far. It's getting obscure. He doesn't want to go easy. He doesn't want to go easy, right? Yeah. How many more are there? Uh, there's 10 total, okay, so, so you're about to do 9 and then 10. Okay, so you have okay. two more left. Right now, Tim has a lead of 1 with 6. Colin has 5. Nick has 2. Nick, I believe in you. You can get to 4. You think you get back? No, not a chance at fucking hell. Yeah, you beat him? Just no. mathematically not possible. No, I don't even mean that. <laughs> <I just> thought... <laughs> 3, 2, 1. Number 9. <sighs> Time ready to get down. Damn it. Damn it. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> We're gonna go! Go, Andre! <laughs> what is it? Uh, he's the best. He did all this for free. <laughs> Alright. He's way too much time on Nick Scarpino <laughs> says Castlevania. 
He crossed it out and wrote Castlevania 2. He's correct. Castlevania 2. Now, Colin Moriarty says Castlevania 2. He is correct. Tim Getty says Castlevania Blood. Bloody Tears is Bloody the name Tears. of the song. But okay. I put Castlevania 1. Oh, I didn't know which one you it was didn't from. put the two. That's heartbreaking. God damn it. Sorry about that. Colin then ties it up six all. Fucking god damn it. Nick coming on strong. Woo! Three. Three. I'm about right to win this it. shit. Come ah! right down to it. Now I should preface on that last one that Greg actually went like this to me. He, get, he, went like, <laughs> he, he wrote that Castlevania. He's like, fuck it. I just went two. <laughs> he gave me the two. And I'm I like, like how you crossed out Castlevania and then wrote Castlevania again. <laughs> no, because I was like, wait a minute. Because the <laughs> Castlevania thing that I think of is <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. But th I remember this being in a Castlevania game. And then I looked at Greg and Greg went like this. <laughs> he gave it the fucking two. Go to second. I was like, all right. All right, ladies so and gentlemen. So technically that was cheating, but I'll take the point. Down? This is number oh, 10. Man. I'm interested to see. Are you guys see. tied? Yeah, they're tied. Yeah. Six all. I'm caught I'm nipping at your heels, too. <laughs> 10, 15 more of these. I might catch up. Kevin, in three. And I'll do it on go this time. Sorry, I did the last one on one. I fucked you. Three, two, one, go. Number 10. Play. <laughs> What is it? Uh, what is Nick? it? Scarpino Come says on. Sweet Valley it? High crossed, crossed out, out. out Goonies. Incorrect. God damn it, it sounded like Cindy Lapper. Colin Moriarty says Star Tropics. Incorrect. I don't even know. I, Tim I didn't even have Didn't anything. even venture a guess. Don't even know. That style didn't even sound familiar. <sighs> the correct answer is The Goonies 2. Two. Two. Fuck. Are you kidding me? <laughs> if you don't shout out, what is that right? Maybe I would have thrown you the two again. Give me the, the two. He, everyone Where was, was looking. Two? Everyone was looking. And you <laughs> we're, ti we're, we're, we're tied. What do we do? That's awesome, though, that he ended on Goonies 2. Yeah. That's a perfect. I haven't played that game in many months. It was never meant to be a competition. It was meant Mike Drucker to test the one Colin Moriarty, who mm. has scored 60% here. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't think there needs to be a declared winner. I'm not I'm not super thrilled to myself, but I am surprised by you have an a lot. Trust. It doesn't this didn't work completely in my sphere. So I'm pretty proud that I got six out of ten considering no Dragon Quest, no Final Fantasy, no Mega Man, no like no Ninja Gaiden, no like Faxanadu or or Crystalis or any like anything that like I love, love, love. Sure. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. probably well, played, Mario and stuff like that. Played against you on that one. Yeah. 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 How do you feel, Tim? Castlevania two. God fucking damn it. I would have had it. You would have had it. I would have. I still had feel it. like there needs to be a winner. Goonies too. Well, see almost what, crushed that. I've never I'm watched, proud of you for that. I never that, watched. That's it. excellent. When actually. you get into City Lopperland, dude, that's where Colin and I. I never watched that's Andre's outro. Was. So let's see if he says anything in case there's a tie. Congratulations, you got. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go! I'm so proud of you for getting out of ten correct. You're amazing. We're terrible. I just don't know. This was pre-recorded. Thank you, everybody. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to theirs. They're awesome. I love you. I'm tired. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Andre. A winner is you. <laughs> Good job. That was an awesome. That was Thank a fun you very one. much. I, was so good. I feel I, I I love that Andre did that. But I feel incomplete. We with it. This is nothing. It's a competition. Uh, clearly. Okay. Do you want Kevin to look up? A, <laughs> no, Kevin. Kevin, no. find me an NES. <laughs> I think we need to do round two at some point. Yeah. That later, sounds like later a better deal. That sounds like a better deal, I think. Because I, if there's something I know about Colin, it's that he's perfectly fine to wait. This won't grade on him at all <laughs> the next two or three weeks. <laughs> this will be part he won't be talking Nintendo about World this. Championship. Oh. Maybe one of the rounds needs Finally to be. Finally, some way to screw uh, me over out of my title. I like it. All right. I, Kevin, can you do this? Because if you don't remember, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> I, I was am the reigning, kind of funny, and Nintendo like, world champion. Where do you get that? You just carry that around with you? I will carry it around all the time. Just, Greg, just to so remind much. Tim, he's never, ever <laughs> won it, held this title. He I never will. It. Oh, I will. I don't think you That will. title will be mine, Greg. So thank you to Andre. Go subscribe to YouTube.com slash Black Nerd Comedy. And then, of course, thank you to Mike Drucker, who supported us over on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny, just like you can. Get your topic read. Have a great time. Be one of the best friends out there.
Tim. Yes. What's your topic? My topic is karaoke. Oh. Yes. Uh, so uh, there's a reason for this. And that reason is I just came from Philadelphia, which Philadelphia. it's actually where the karaoke came from. That's what I heard. That's where it was that invented. Is, well, every motherfucking thing is the first thing in Philadelphia. Right. It's like you could not walk a block. And I'm talking even in like the projects and the not really nice areas without some plaque. That's like, this is the first gutter this that was ever made. This is the first bell. This is the what? first. It's an old Dunkin town. Donuts. And it's just like, God damn. Man. It's at it. least 100 years it. old. Yeah. At least, if not one ten, anyway, I enjoyed my time very much because I was. Did with you my go to girlfriend. Pat and Gino's? Gia. I went to Pat. Yes, it was Pat's is the name of Pat's it. Pat's and Gino's. Yeah. Yes, they're two right competing the Philly cheesesteak places that are directly across the street from each other, facing each other in the most like intense Mexican face off I've ever seen. And stand it's off, yeah. stand off, yeah, and it's amazing. I like, like Mexican face off. I just, I just love that they're just fucking like, like talking shit to each other, like so hard, especially Gino's. Cause like Sam's is the other place. No, Pat's. Pat's. It's like it's this like. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin just looked at me when I said Mexican face off. He looked at me like he was expecting me to do a version of face off with a Mexican accent, and I really wanted to. But then he was like, he gave me the don't do it version of face off. Oh sure, sure. With a Mexican accent, it'll come off super racist. I apologize to him. No, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, freaking Pat's is just like they're chill. They're just like, hey, we're classic and we're the first motherfuckers. Like they had that vibe. Yeah. Gino's is just fucking. There's like neon signs and shit, and they just have middle fingers up. Did like, they still? Yeah. Did it still look like it was September 12, two thousand one? No. Remember I was telling you about that before when oh, I went there and I walked American? up and it's all like, yeah, if you don't speak right. English, get out of America. And there was like all this never forget stuff. I'm like, oh, oh no, uh, no <laughs> what is happening I didn't here? Know that, but it, was ve- it was very American okay. and just like in its exuberance. Um, I thought they were both very okay oh, and I didn't, didn't love my adventure there. Now, having said that, I need it to be pointed out that it was freezing cold. Mm, like sure. now I'm not just like, oh. I'm this little boy from San Francisco. I don't know what cold is. That is true. Yes. Having said that, I was there with East Coast people, and they're all like, it hasn't been like this. This is too damn cold, and it was too damn cold. I thought I was going to die on multiple occasions. Gotcha. So mm-hmm. I think that did kind of okay. ruin my hamper, experience because they experience. don't have indoor seating, Right. which I'm going to be honest, that all goes into the food experience. Like If you're going to be in freaking Philadelphia and it's negative 1,000 degrees, how are you going to just have outside tables? That doesn't even make sense. Like Step your game up. Maybe sure. you should be the first place to make some good decisions. And fucking beat the other guy. You'll send him a Who, plaque. That's all they need. Have another building next to it. And then they'd be fucking good. Yeah, I'll give them whatever plaque they want. Anyways, we went to do karaoke. Sure. And immediately I was upset because I thought we were going to one of those places where there's like the separate rooms you go into mm-hmm. and like you're just with your friends. That's not, that that's stuff. real karaoke. That's not fun American karaoke. So, so then there's the, the fun American karaoke, which is like you go to a bar and then there's a stage. People mm. have to go up the stage. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I love that. It's, it's like, it, it just, there's something about it that it's just a little, too presentational for me, which it's is weird. Uh, it's not even that. That's not why I don't like it. But this place was in. A, it was a weird in between where mm. it was a bar, but there was no stage. There was just mics that would travel around the room. I don't like anything about that. And it was fucking awesome because every time a new song would come on, there was just screens all around the room, and you didn't know who like was singing or where they were. So every time a new song started. You're like trying to look around to see who it is, and there's like mini mosh pits starting in the room. And as the night got drunker, it just got hella fun. Mm. Like that is now my new preferred form of karaoke. So wow! Shout out to Philadelphia because that shit was fucking awesome. They're the first karaoke place to do that for you. Yeah, they are also the first karaoke place to not have Genuine's Pony, which was the most upsetting thing because that video would have been awesome. But they did have everybody by Backstreet Boys, so I kind of rocked the shit out of that one. So that was good. But anyways, I wanted yeah. to know what you guys' thoughts are on karaoke. What are your go-to songs? And what style do you prefer? It's mm. a good topic. I love karaoke. Mm. And I'm getting out my karaoke song list for you. Do you have like a notepad ready? I, I yeah, love you, Greg. You're, You're such a fucking you think mm-hmm. you can, amazing person. You can read down that right there. Now, these are not ranked in order okay. of favorite song. If I'm going to a karaoke joint, I go in, I crack the book, I go to Daryl Worley. Have you forgotten the 911 song? Mm. Let me tell you, it plays well everywhere but New York, and I know that from experience. <laughs> All right, you go there, you <laughs> sing about it because he he talks about the Pentagon in a song. Mm. Are you kidding me? That's fun. And then, <laughs> if not that, then I'm doing yeah. Dynamite Hack, Boys in the Hood. That's a good one. That plays that plays in my strengths. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very you. It is very in me. a nutshell. Thanks All you. right, I, I don't know 90 percent of these songs. You're an idiot. If if I could be like that, yeah, three doors down. Okay. If I can be like that, I would give anything. 
So you know I just, song? You, know you guys song? know this sucks so far. You guys, Daryl Worley. I'm going to talk Miller, about this in a minute. Greg Miller is the, the karaoke god because he knows every word to every song ever. And I think that is the key to karaoke. You sure. can't be reading off the screen. No, you need to no, be no, 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 You need no. to be performing. Nothing is more impressive to a lady you're trying to court than if you are singing karaoke Taylor Swift and you turn mm. your back to the monitor and sing it to her. That's the only way to go. See, I will, I will disagree with you respect, respectfully. In that, I think you should know the words, but toward the end of the song, act like you don't really know the words, like you are just so you're not a fucking psychopath who practices their karaoke before you walk in. Well, there is that guy, and that guy was coming out strong that night. It was this giant, really big dude, and oh, he was just killing it. He was just, it was Valentine's Day. Right. So that, that was, ah. love was in the air. And he did the thing where it's like, okay, you're going a little too far on the freestyling. Sure. Where it's like, the words were like, oh, baby. And he's like, oh, 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 baby, baby, baby. baby. And he's like, like, look at yeah. random like girls. Playing two out of the rapper. Just, I'm like, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> what you got to do is you got you got to get the fine art of by about the third verse, by or whatever the last verse is. You break, you laugh a little bit, and everyone in the audience laughs with you. Like, oh, this guy is immortal. Like, he's not. He's not some superhero. He's not, out there. He's not a god. You know, yeah. out there. He he's picked, one of us. He went through the songbook just like me. Exactly. <laughs> I could be him if I just tried hard and sang in my car on the 91 freeway for like five years in college. Yeah. You know and what I mean? mean? Fucking gold. Yeah. Now, something I liked about the like weird you know, bullpit area thing yeah. was that like, you can kind of like, if you saw someone was super into your performance, you can like give them the mic and have them like finish lines and shit. And it was awesome. It became mm. like a community effort. Right. And right, I really right, appreciate right, right. that. Let's keep going down the list, Greg. Now this list is deep. So I don't understand what Colin's already hating on about it. It's a, it's a karaoke. That's the problem. It's Greg. a karaoke song for every mood. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I'm Greg's depressed prepared. when I go there. I'm going to get, I'm I'm get awake. The, Maybe grandma died. I'm going to get into the karaoke mantra in a minute. What then in the inherent, Flaw of this list, but I, we'll, I do we'll, want to give we'll, a social butterfly Colin Moriarty here how to be successful at karaoke. I want to give a shout out to the like 60 year old Asian man that tried his best to sing My Heart Will Go On, nice. and it's like I, I'm assuming he never heard the song before he nice. did it because it was just a disaster in the most beautiful way. The thing about that song is it comes from a place of pure passion, yeah. So you don't actually have to sing it to feel it, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Nothing beats Celine Dion. The no, king of nothing. wishful thinking. Come on now. That that's is a good, that's a good Thank song. Thank you. That's What's the king of wishful thinking? I'll get over you. Pretty woman? I know. Oh, okay, yeah. Win. That's a good song. Good There's song. this great breakdown. Anything from the 80s is great during karaoke. I'll never shed a tear for you. See, I'll I think things are changing. Over you. That's good. Do that. I would, I would, you I would, I would watch you rock that. destroy. I have destroyed with that song. So we're, now I think, the, the, you know, the demographics are changing. It's a 90s game now. When you go to the karaoke bars, it's like There's, people are. There are certain that's what they go crazy 80s for. songs that will never course, go away. There course. is it, during every karaoke night, for instance, someone always plays Journey, and they either play it too early, mm -hmm. just a small town girl, right? Yeah, you can't play it too early. Can't play it too early. That's got to be everyone's got. Fit. No, don't pick that song. Drink one. No, come on, Journey. It's the obvious choice. Drink fourteen. Fucking play some Journey right now. I need to sing to that. And you just see a. You'll look back if you're singing or if you're you know you're facing yeah. people and just a sea of people exploding and the worst fucking sound coming at you because no one can sing Journey. Yeah, it's no one can sing that's it well. Except true. my brother, he can actually kill. He can and crush Brennan Ayub, man. Brennan can do, but Brennan can't last like longer than two verses. I, I'll tell you just as a quick thing. I will never forget Brennan singing any way you want it. And I was like, holy shit. Like, that guy can sing, like, really rock that song. His you know? Dirty Pop is my favorite by NSYNC. Because he, he does he the whole the choreographed dance from the video. And like, oh, if you've seen Brennan and I Who, that's a special sight. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> right, keep going through this. All right, we got... You can move on to everybody else's list. I'm just no, letting you know like, how serious I, like I am. I, Some of these are works in progress. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't go out and put them out. But, you know, like, on a Tuesday night, I'm, some, I'm in Nashville for some reason. I'll go to an open night, like... Greg, I love you so much. Yeah. I got to get through this list I because love, I love that you referred to karaoke as open mic night. They're all open mic nights. Crazier, at karaoke. <laughs> crazier careers have been launched. No. Screaming infidelities. Oh yeah, dashboard confessional. Okay. But as for now, I'm gone. I love all the emo stuff. Come on, California. Yeah, by Phantom, Phantom Planet. Planet. Yeah. California. I saw Phantom Planet in a play in a record store once. It was really weird. There How many people were there? Was it in California? Uh, no, it was in Boston. Uh, mm. Probably 100 people. It was interesting. Yeah. When they played the song California, how, did everyone get it? Did they know what California That's was? That's all I wanted to see. I think I yeah. might even That's what that everybody up. wanted to see. Because I like to know. They just put out a new record. It doesn't matter. Okay. Teenage Dirtbag. Yeah. Weedus, the yeah. Pride of Long Island. Come on. That's a good one. <clears throat> Take Me Home Tonight. Yeah. I'll give good you one. that. So that's the second song on this list that I think is a karaoke song. I'll Be by Edward McCain. Yeah. That one, Shirtless Wisconsin on a bachelor party. That one I, I destroyed a bar we were at. 
Come on, feel the noise. Yeah. No, okay. Sorry. I did Quiet not riot. Did not know it was spelled C U M. It is. Yep. Okay. Is it really? Do you like now, that I'm I'm <laughs> I'm that accurate? <laughs> Do now, I want to be able to find these songs at a glance. Here's the thing that That's got me song. most excited about this list. Sure. There is two songs on this list. Yeah. Common people, and home sweet home. Right. Okay. Don't know what th- those songs. Yeah, you know are. home sweet home by Poison. Home sweet home. I love okay. that song. And then, That's a hard song. And then common people. Tonight I'm on my way. We gotta go. Let's go right now. Go oh, karaoke. Who, oh, who's I'll calling people? By? I have no idea. That must okay. have been. I heard it somewhere, and I was like, I'd like to learn that song. Now, my favorite thing about these two songs is it says "Learn, Common People," <laughs> and "Learn, Home Sweet Home." You are the most serious motherfucker I've ever met about this right, shit. Now, and I appreciate that. Now let me let me get down in the Home Sweet Home. I've, if you can rock Home Sweet Home, I'll. That's awesome. We just did. It's that's a hard song, dude. It changes register midway, yeah. and oh, there's ready. like. There's the problem is I can sing all these songs for five seconds, but how many of us have been out there where you're like, I got this. And by the second verse, you're like, I got nothing left in the tank. That's why I and started writing things down, right? Because you get up there and you because it's always, oh, I know that song. I enjoy that song. And you get right. up there and then you learn, oh, I don't know. Oh, the my God. Part. So really my favorite this. thing was uh, this group. It was like a bachelorette party. And one of them was like, let's do um, Always There by Ashanti and Ja Rule. The always there when you call, but I'm always mm-hmm. on time. That song. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it's like, oh, that yeah, I know that song. Except you forget that it's the jaw rule part where there's verses in between each chorus. These people just pretended that wasn't a thing and sang the chorus for three minutes straight. Nice. Just over and I over that. and over. <laughs> right, do what so, you gotta do. So here's the mansion. So, so this is the thing about you know Greg's list. Everyone can have their own list. It's totally fine. Yeah. There's a that's a self-indulgent list. The art of karaoke is to make sure you're playing songs people around you actually give a fuck about. Mm-hmm. If you're playing Teenage Dirtbag, which I appreciate because it is from a band from Long Island, and we all like that very much. We all love Long Island. Best uh, island ever. Then, like, the, the mentality's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, you have to play songs that people know. I agree, you know? but and you're like, underselling Weedus's potential here. You're understanding... Uh, we- Weedus has a hook in a lot of us of our age bracket. Where you get up there, and it might be that Weedus Teenage Dirtbag, and people are like, huh? They're like, oh, the American Pie song? Fuck yeah. Is it an American Pie? I will, People are related to that because of all it's the in, Jason It's in Biggs. that other Jason Biggs movie. Yeah, yeah the where loser he, one. Lo- yeah. yeah. But so like my thing is like, because I, I did a lot of karaoke in college especially. And then early on when I came here, I, I love karaoke. I think it's fun. But you like you learn that quickly. Like you have to do things that like people really know and like like, like if you want to have a lot of fun. So like to me, it's like uh, like any Tears for Fear song is fun to do. Or like Maneater is always my fucking uh, go to hollow notes. notes. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna get you're gonna bring down the house like that. if you want to get in the 90s like interstate love song or jeremy or something it's really funny to do like songs that people like heard on the radio and know whatever because i would love to do like really obscure shit because it's fun not that any of that's like super obscure because not, i love dashboard confessional for instance mm-hmm. um but that was just my i mean it's not serious it's a it's karaoke really give the fuck but that was always my mentality was like what is Greg the song the what is the song about that like will make people like elicit like interest like because karaoke is a team sport you know what I mean? It's not. It's you got to have people out there sing, and and that's actually to Greg's earlier point. I'm like, I will give you that because when it hits that hook, everyone will go, "Oh, I'm just a teenage derp," and they'll go, "Yeah," because yeah, they won't know the other part of the lyrics. But that's when they shut up and listen. But I I understand Colin's point, and it's the same problem I have with Halloween costumes. People should know you have to inherently it. what you are wearing. You should not have to explain your Halloween costume to a group of people and have them fake like they know what the fuck you're talking about. And meanwhile, they're like, he's gone off his meds, right? Like with me, I, I'm with you on that one, Colin. I think you go obvious choice. One, well, maybe one step below the obvious choice. That's as far as you go. Yeah. But like to me, because to me, it's like karaoke is not fun if people around you aren't having fun. Like if you're up there singing and like everyone's like, what the fuck is this? Right. Like that's not that sucks. You can just do that in your bedroom. Yeah, you know I mean? like no. so, like that's so that's my whole mentality. That's why I think like the police are really fun to sing, or like you know, like you can. Police are so hard to sing. Though. How are you guys doing this? Or because it's not about like hitting all the, the register or whatever. It's about you know enjoying yourself. And also, true. karaoke it, like it makes everything sound good on the mic at least. I don't know what magic it has, but it's like well, they usually put the actual vocals behind you too. Sometimes. Well, it's that, but also they they do some weird mixing thing that's like man, like I don't sound like that. I know I don't sound like that. You think you sound good to the audience. Everyone just sounds like no, but I mean, I'm sounding even with other people. Yeah, it's possible. like I'll be with them and like I hear it and I hear them in real life. And I'm like, damn, mm. there's a difference. Um, I'm with you on this one, Colin, because one of the songs I liked, I like to sing a few, a handful of songs, a small smattering of songs. One of them is hit or miss. And that's creep by Radiohead. Mm. Like, I love that song, but you have to pull it out right after there was a like right after someone did. Don't stop believing. Mm hmm. 
like then you do radio, you, you cool it down a little bit with mm-hmm. Radiohead, mm-hmm. right? And then someone else brings something back up. Like, say my you name. can't start your set with Radiohead because people are gonna be like, "What this guy? Jesus, I don't want to talk to him." And maybe like get him a seltzer water or something instead of alcohol. He shouldn't be self medicating. Get the blades um, away from him. Yeah, exactly. But I like to start the night off with the same song every single time. And that's Stevie Wonder's Superstition. Mm. Now, not a lot of people know they know that song. And not, even if you don't know that song, it's just a really good song that kicks the night off mm. at a good tempo, so to speak. Um, if I'm filling my oats, I will go to Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. Because mm. women love that song. And that's one of those where you can literally just molest people, guys <laughs> and girls. And as long as you're singing Marvin Gaye, they're like, it's Marvin Gaye. Let's get it on. Get Let's get it on. Um, and then when I'm really drunk, and this is always a crowd pleaser, because no matter every time I pull this out, people go, f- and you just look around, and there's a crowd behind you. I've always wanted to do this. Gin and juice. Mm. I won Mr. Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. Rap, you would not think goes over well in karaoke, because it kind of defies the law of karaoke. It's not really singing, but it is performing, and everyone knows the lyrics to gin and juice. And that, See, that's the key, is with rap, you need to know every single lyric without looking at the screen, and you need to be able to kill it and perform and like act out and just do dumb shit. People fucking love that shit. Mm-hmm. The best. If, you, if you're messing it up, you start... No, 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 no. no, 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 no. We were, when we were at the Brass Monkey one year, after E3 or before E3, because that used to be the trip, um, we were there watching karaoke, and this... Guy got up and he, I'm, I'm, I think I got all this right, but it's not an important part. But this guy got up. I want to say he was like typical white country guy, right? And he got up to do not Gin and Juice, but some other Snoop Dogg song. And it went in. And as soon as he started, everybody was like, oh, shit. And he knew everything. And this guy got up from the bar, walked over. He was in a shirt, a collared shirt. You remember this? Mm-hmm. The earpiece in his thing. And he just took out a wad of cash and made it rain on him. And awesome. it was like the most fucking crazy yeah, thing we'd ever seen. Yeah. That's baller as fuck. Yeah. See, the thing, the thing for me, and I have this going for me, is it's an easy win. Is do either Ice Ice Baby or M- any Eminem song, uh, and I get that, that instant street creds. Yeah, nah. okay. Macklemore doesn't have the same level of sure. You know, uh, Ice is Ice, this Ice a Baby is a this guy. Good it's perfect. Pull. It's Great perfect pull. because then people you're in on the joke. If you start doing like, like you're not gonna see me be doing like Kanye songs and shit. You know what I mean? Like then it's like, eh. but if I'm obviously in on it, they just love it. Gotcha. It's the truth. Now let me ask you this question: the all important question. When you get some of the more racy expletives in some of the rap. Never do it. Never do them, right? I mean, well, see, that's why I stick with the white people. Oh, okay. Because I was looking, and there was like certain songs like Paris by Kanye and Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'd love to do that. I can't do that. Can't do so it. I'm just not going to. Can't Someone else it. did it, and I appreciated that. Because then I could sing along and not say the parts that I, I don't want to say. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? What I do in, in Boys in the Hood with Dynamite Hack, of course, the N-word pops up once. Mm-hmm. And I say, Young Greggy's. Mm. I don't see, see I don't like doing that. I don't. I. I just. I want to keep it pure. Roman I don't want to fuck with shit. I want to get in yeah. there and like. But it's fun though because you can actually like, like with rap, it's it is fun because a lot of people will just kind of chime in on the parts they know and things like that. Yeah. And you, I would recommend picking something of the classics that have been around for a long time. Don't do. I wouldn't do anything that's like brand new because people well, will like the song, but they don't know the lyrics. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I will say, Hotline Bling fucking killed it. Oh, that's it. Did yeah, you but that? that's not the that's hardest. Like, song. Yeah. I get up a Hotline Bling. I got a hot of it. That's pretty much the entire lyric of the song. And all you have to do is this. Yeah. Or whatever the fuck that dance is that he doesn't. Did you see that AT&T commercial he's <laughs> so on? Good. With Kevin Butler. That's Verizon. ridiculous. Greg, there's a, uh, a decisive cool. lack of T-Swift on your list. Right, yeah. No? I don't need to. I mean, she. I don't want to butcher her songs, her lyrics. I try to stay in something I know I can hit. A Taylor Swift song, hard to perform. I've done it once or twice, of course, mm-hmm. obviously, mm-hmm. with my sing star background pedigree, if you will. Mm. Uh, but like when I'm out there, it's also a lot of people going to do that. I don't need to go that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. need to stoop to that level. I got King of Wishful Thinking in my back pocket. They didn't have any new Taylor Swift at the one I was at either. Yeah. It was all the older stuff. So, a, a random surprise hit that I was one of those things. Where I'm like, I didn't know I knew every word of this. There was a Grease medley. Oh. They have like all you know the key hit. One? Oh my god, do that, the like, place blew the fuck up for that. Do, do, do. Oh, everyone loves Grease. Yeah. If there's one thing people like more drunk karaoke karaoke goers love more than Journey, it's Grease. Hundred <laughs> it percent. Yeah, they, it was a experience for sure. You find out some really fun shit about your friends when a Grease song comes on. I'm like, <laughs> what? What is that? Is that you're the one that I want? Is that the name of the song? Yeah. I don't know. I don't it's know the name of the song. But when that song comes on, you look over at even some of your hardest hitting friends, and they're like. <laughs> Honey, the one that I want. Yo, the one that I Who would you describe as your hardest hitting friend? I don't have probably (laughs) Kevin. Probably Kevin. I don't have any I don't hang out with any thugs anymore. Yeah. Uh, So then I guess to round out this topic, the other part you asked was what do you prefer more? Mm. Because I think again, my song's built 
for or my song was built for maybe i'm in the private room maybe there's five of us maybe in the private room there's 10 of us maybe i'm in the giant mosh pit as you call it mm. what do you prefer tim see now i like this mosh pit thing like the the ability to like collaborate with motherfuckers yeah. man it made it it made it a special thing and again they didn't have thong song very mm, upset about that come on yeah where's the love for cisco but uh, i prefer that or the rooms i don't like the stage thing i just I like the stage see. thing yeah, see, the stage is the me. best that's the point that's yeah. the whole point you're performing. I, the best we ever did the best karaoke ever was edmonds and shaman library where you remember this we always talk about this in south We've city talked about it. I haven't yeah been. colin and i met there for the first time uh when we because we'd go there with like 19 ign editors and take over this filipino karaoke bar that was run by transvestites in the front that sat that stood up there and then they hosted it and did comedy segments and made fun of their arm hair and all this other stuff and then when you came up to do your songs they would fall into the back and they'd be backup singers to you so you already came, even if you didn't have a crew, which everybody did, of course, but if you didn't have a crew for your song, you had people in the background that were making better. And I, of course, always hammed it up with them and stuff. That's like that. great. That's awesome. So that sounds cool. I mean, I, I love the stage. Um, I don't like the small rooms, although the small rooms are very fun, but that's more of a party with karaoke. That's not really karaoke. True. True karaoke to me is you get a little butterfly before you go up. Mm -hmm. You're a little drunk. You start singing and then you look out into a sea of people you don't know and they're singing back to you and you get that semi- like concert vibe for a second where you're like hey this must be you get a flash of what it might feel like to actually perform in front of real people for, the, for like in a real set, uh, setting um i'm gonna give a quick shout out though to hollow notes uh namely um i can't go for that which is another song that i want to learn how to do in karaoke so kudos to you for rem reminding me of that yeah hollow notes is great karaoke that's quintessential karaoke but yeah. I, I would say like that you know the, the the song that is fun to sing if you have the balls to sing it is Abba's Dancing Queen. Mm. Now that's that's a song that people can get fucking down to. You know, that's a fucking song, dude. Yeah. And like you have to have some balls to sing that song. There's a lot is a high register on you that. You gotta song. have actually no balls to sing that song. True. That's a, that's actually <laughs> a really good point. That's actually there. a really great point. Unix style. So like that's that to me, like, yeah, I agree. Is like karaoke to me is like only karaoke if you're doing it in front of people you don't know. Like like that's that's the idea, you know? Like in my opinion, mm -hmm. like that's the singing in front of people. There's different ways you can do it. I mean, Sing Star is still karaoke or something like that, but mm. it's about like not be like there. Like that's why I always think about when I when I look at a, a song list. Like, yeah, I'd love to do a three eleven song. I mean, no one wants to hear that. Like, it's, you have to look at it. And be like, what like what do people want to hear? Like, what's gonna like make like what are they gonna sing along to? And you have to find you have to identify like those specific songs. You know, um, in my opinion, I mean that's the way I feel because you have to be cognizant of the people around you. I I because I've been to so many karaoke places where I like I've even heard people being like, what is this? Like, why is this person even playing the song? Like. You know, like, yep. and that's true because you're wasting everyone's time. You have to like, so it's like a group. It's a team fucking game. It's like baseball. Like everyone's getting there, like going up to the plate and you have to like rely on each other. But you don't want like someone to strike out and then it affects the entire team. You know? Yeah. And, like, oh, oh yeah. So that's, that's oh, yeah. kind of like my take on it. You know? I have friends that like, I know can't sing and won't do it and they get too drunk and I'll just be like, no, no. We're on a fucking hitting streak right now, bro. Oh, speaking of hitting streaks, one of the people in my group did, I will survive. That's another one that's just like every motherfucker. Oh, well, is gonna jam if you want to talk about the you want to pull a song out and have every single person in the bar be like, oh, I'll just I'll hum you the first three like notes in this. Sweet Diamond. Caroline. Everyone's like, bah, 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 bah. you gotta do that. that song. Song, Someone's gotta do that. That song has I such don't a pick it though, because it's it's on the list like 50 yeah, times. Yeah, that's a song that th that song's kind of ruined for me because it's a, such a connotation to Boston Red Sox. But um, it's ruined for me because Damon always does it and he does it the best I've ever heard. Like Damon just destroys it. And you're like, yeah. well, no one else. I can never hear anyone else do it. I'm glad the Red you're Sox had ruined it for me. That was great. Damon has that range for it. Damon has that, oh, yeah. that, that timber to his voice that is, yeah. is like the diamond. Yeah. The diamond. <laughs> it's the diamond, bro. Colin. <laughs> yes. What's your topic? Um, so I was thinking, I was writing earlier on my phone just to make sure I had the list here. Um, I Colin, was thinking I about. I apologize. I'm going to go to the restroom. I was thinking about right forms. Back. Okay. I was thinking about forms of entertainment and. Uh, I identified like five forms of entertainment, five ways we like we we uh, we consume media, um, and I wanted to know what how, like how you would order them in in terms of important like your most important to least important to you, so that if like you can only really take one or two of them with you, which ones would you want? So there's only five that I can identify. We can get deeper into it, but this is basically what I said. So it's like reading, like books usually, right, or like magazines or something like that. Watching TV or TV shows, uh -huh. watching movies, film. Playing video games, and then listening to music or playing music, music of any variety. Right, gotcha. Do you want? Do you want to write it down? Do you need to write it down? Because I need to write it down. I need to look at this now. All right, here. Can I get it? 
What do you need? The marker? Why'd you give it to him? Why are you throwing it? That could have taken out his eye, Kevin. Then who? we couldn't put him on camera anymore because you have no eye. Oh, I guess we can't give him a patch. Good call. Okay, take out his eye. All right. So for me, most important, I'm putting games at the top of the list. Okay. Done. I'm going to do two, three, four, five. Dun, 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 dun. Now I'll make, here, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go, you know what? I can already tell you what my least important thing is. Music. So I put that at five. So there we go. Now we got TV, movies, and reading. This is where it gets interesting. Yeah, okay. Number two, most important, reading. So I can read comics and the internet. Yeah, does uh, reading the internet count? Yeah, it's reading, period. You just said reading. Okay. Well, well I was reading. saying, I, I don't really feel like that. I don't think I would even count comics in that either. I, comics would be, I don't know what that would be. Uh, I was saying more like reading books, reading magazines, like re like reading. We all read every day. I'm reading that, the I, fucking tape on but the that's box my whole, right over there. That, so then, yeah, the internet totally counts. You're going to tell me you're reading an article on the internet and it's not as valuable as an article in a magazine? Okay. I mean, if that's the way you want to quantify it, yeah. Okay. And then... Then I'm going to go TV for your arrows, your flashes, your house of cards. And then I'm going to put movies in there. So movies at four. Just because I the movies I'm like I'm looking forward to Batman v Superman right, but I get 22 hours of the DC universe on CW with any one of these given shows, so why worry about it? Okay, so your order is video games, most important, and then reading, and then TV, and then movies, and then music. Right. Okay, what's yours, Tim? I go reading, if the internet counts. The internet counts. So and then, yeah, definitely that. Then then music, for sure. Music would be my first if the internet didn't count. Um. I'm adding internet videos as a tier because I prefer. That I was gonna put that in there, but movies or TV. <laughs> sure. To me, I, I put it there. Uh, then games, then movies, and then TV is the like far, far, far last one. Rank this from important to mm -hmm. least important. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. What do you got, Colin? So I would put readings first because you love comics. Yeah, because I love comics. Well, I I, I want to read books and I want I like I like learning things. And the, the funny thing about it is that reading encompasses all this other stuff, while none of the other topics encompass reading at all so like i can read about music i can read about games i can read about tv i can read about movies uh but if i were to watch a movie about reading for instance that would be a little weird or something like that and that would be lower on the list so reading like really does encompass everything and so i think i can play is, a game about reading what you could apartment uh yeah. number two would be music and uh this is a tough one for me i mean like because music would almost be number one um specifically playing music which i love to do but listening to music music is so important to me um way more important to me than almost anything so um, I can't imagine a life without without music like that's just not possible. I would rather if I had to give up music or games I'd give up games. What if you had to give up music um, or Greg? I'd give up Greg. Sorry, Greg. Uh, okay. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> I'll sing to you <laughs> <laughs> um, So yeah, like reading is definitely like this fundamental thing just because it's a huge umbrella and I like to read and I like to learn but Music yeah, is, is that thing where it's that's like music is so important. I listen to music hours every day it, it, It's a it's a part of my life playing music You guys don't know that part of me too well even though I play bass and guitar like you know here um, Although my my E string on my bass is all screwed up. So I haven't played in a while um, But I played music for hours every day when I was a kid um, my drums and stuff like that I just can't play them here. So it's it, it's almost why I think I have so much angst actually because I have like no way to get it out uh, So music's really important to me listening. Yeah, the slow jerk. Yeah, you do. gotta just uh, what, Oh, can that go on the list? Oh, just you masturbation can't add or categories. Option? He gave us the five. So, the, so <laughs> yeah. So music, I just can't. I just one. can't overstate how how essential music is to me. It's like such an mm. important art form. Like it's it's emotional. It's it's resonant. It's powerful. Um, like life without music is just not life worth living at all for mm. me. Um, and I mean that one hundred percent. If someone was like, you can't listen to music anymore, I'd be like, well, I don't really want to live. Uh, <laughs> I'm straight. I'm straight up. It's like why? Like what? What? Like what? Where do you get your inspiration? Like where do you get? Where do you where do you escape? Where do you I don't know. It's just so it's so powerful, so poetic. Uh, video games I'd put number three, although I was thinking about putting TV ahead of it. But I think games would be you know games are so important to me for so long. I've been playing games for almost thirty years, so it's um, you know video games are are uh, transcendent as it were, and so I would put that there. And then TV shows I'd put number four because I like my TV shows. I like my my stories as as they might say. Mm. Uh, and then I'd put movies. They being all of our grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then number five, I put movies. And the funny thing about this is I love all of these things. It's just uh, that would be, you know, that's why the choices are hard. That's why the topic came up on my mind about how you would mm -hmm. order your media um, and important so that if you were, if they were to now say like, all right, put a line in between two and three, nothing under two is anything you're ever going to do again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh. like, would you be comfortable with that choice? 
that the choices you made. And for me, if I had reading and music and nothing and none of these other things, I'd be totally comfortable with that. I mean, I wouldn't want to do that, but if that was the choice I had to make, I wouldn't want to reorder it in any way. Me yeah, too. I'm with that. Yeah. Any games and reading? I got reading music. I put reading as number one. Not because I read a lot. But you love because Anne Rice books. Every single time I read, I'm like, fuck. I really like this. I should do this more often. It's the 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 sense of achievement and the depth of sort of the experience when you read a good book is probably better than any other medium, in my opinion. Um, I just recently finished Dune, which is a book that I probably ought to have read a long time ago. It's a great book. I was book. blown away by it. I thought, I'm like, I started reading it. I'm like, this is really dense. There's a lot of different names in this. I don't think I'm going to, and within the first chapter, I'm like, holy shit, this is like, this is like a predecessor to Game of Thrones, but in space, like 300 years from now. Space. Like, it's such a unbelievably well-realized world. And it's done to the point where you hit the last page and you're like, oh, but you're talking like hundred. I think it's like 800. I read it on an iPad, so I don't know how many pages it actually equates out to be in paperback, but I think it's something like seven or 800 pages. Um, and I'm like, shit, this was a great experience. And not only that, but reading is the only experience you can do that you have to just focus on the book. Mm-hmm. Right. Like all these other things, I always have a second screen in my hand. I'm looking up IMDb. Um, my attention's really being drawn away. I get up, I go do something. But with reading, I'm like, sit down. You're in this own world, and if it's a book that's worth the, ch- uh, you know, uh, you know, is actually worth it, then you're just you lose time, and it's such a it's such a wonderful thing. Um, next is movies for me, just because I will always love movies. Uh, I, 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 you know, I think it's, I think it is my preferred method of just how I like to get the three act structure of a story told to me. And let's be honest, most of the great movies out there were good books to begin with. So with those two, I feel like I got the whole basis covered. Um, I put music as number three, simply because I. I listen to a lot of music, but I also, you know, I have a couple extras on here. I know we're not supposed to put that there, but I will loop in like podcasts with music because they all kind of come through my phone. I don't know if that's the same thing or not, but <laughs> just having someone in your ear, like like just spoken word or music in my ear, I think is really, really important to me. It's how I relax. Um, and I actually put games next above TV. And here's why. Because recently I've realized that TV, for the most part, is a tremendous waste of time. Sure. And it is just the exact same thing over and over. I'm talking network television. Mm-hmm. Exact with the exception, the rare exception of obviously the Walking Dead, the Game of Thrones, Even those the though. Daredevils, the things that are trying to be different. It is still TV is still stuck in this weird need to be episodic, need to run multiple multiple seasons to the point where every single show just runs itself into the ground and I'm tired of the rat race and I just to me it's all just monster of the week stuff that's yeah true there and everyone in the comments are like and it's crazy there's all this great stuff on TV there are good things on TV but, bad but it's all derivative all, yeah you know um and so I would put games above that because to me I'm I'm still kind of relatively like getting into games and so every time I play a good game like I played we played Firewatch I was like, ah, it was really cool. That was a different experience for me. Completely different way to uh, to experience a story. That was really, really fun. Of course, then you play games that you don't like so much, and you're 60 hours in, and you're like, fuck. Well, and you play feel for 60 hours. Well, I, I've stopped. I, I Before, I used to try to play I had the pressure of, like, I started this. I got to finish it. Sure, but sure, At a certain sure, point, sure. I'm like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. Hmm. Uh, but I will give a shout-out to YouTube as well and to porn. Yeah. Shout-out to YouTube take up a lot of my, both, both of which take up an exorbitant amount of my time, for sure. So I, did, so I just did the, the math here. On what every, what everyone's choices were, and the cute because I want to see what we would cumul- how we would cumulatively rate everything, and it makes sense. I think uh, number one would be reading, so books, mm-hmm. but more importantly, I think the internet for you guys and me too probably. Comics. Um, comic books for Greg. Uh, number two, games just edge out music. I'm the only one to put it number one though because they're fake gamer boys. Um, Why'd you point to me? I put it like almost dead last. <laughs> <laughs> so games would be number two. Right behind it is music at number three. And then movies at number four, and then TV at number five, and that's that, I can live with that list. I mean, I would rather because that list is fine. It's not ordered the way I, I would order it. There, there's a few you know things that are that would be moved around. But I almost asked how you would order it, but then I realized you already did. Yeah, yeah. reading, music, games, so TV, how would you order it? Movies. Um, yeah. Um, but I don't want. I do want to give a, a special shout out to uh, porn. To, to yeah, to porn. Yeah, of course, porn definitely. It's the Again, it's a reductive kind of way of looking at things because there's more ways to entertain ourselves and stuff on the internet, for instance, or whatever. But um, but I just was curious about how you guys would order it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was just I really do think about sometimes like if someone was just to be like just you can't do the bottom half of whatever you want to do like you can't do it anymore. Mm. Yeah, so like be very definitely. careful with like what you want like what you would want not that that would happen but like what would you want that list to look like in that reality. 
I would be total. I mean, honestly, if, if someone said, I mean, and this is the idea I flirt with, I'm I'm just in the age bracket where like the idea of cutting the cable is just it's still painful to me. But I could do without TV. I would probably be twenty percent happier if I just stopped watching TV altogether. I just why, but so why don't you? But I see that's the whole thing is like for me, TV is strictly a DVR. It's you know it's an appointment. Is appointment viewing yeah. is dead, right? Mm-hmm. So like that's the whole thing is I've thought about it where I, I mean we should we should get rid of it. we should cut it and I'll I'll buy what I want on iTunes or I'll do this right? mm-hmm. and then you start adding up what a la carte would actually be and you're like well fuck actually I'm getting a pretty good deal with cable as long as I just go through and I'm selective that way I don't do the th- I haven't I cannot with the exception of like when you're exhausted or something. After an E3, but even then, I, I can't remember the last time I came home, sat down, I was like, what's on TV today? We just click, 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 and stopped see, and stopped somewhere. I do that all the time. Really? And the problem is, like, here's what inevitably happens. My wife and I will sit down, we'll talk to each other, we'll have dinner, and then once we're done with that... You bang? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you not know me? Uh, we'll inevitably be like, hey, let's just watch a little TV. What's on TV? And my wife will always say, just find something. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if only it were that simple. So I start with HBO. See what movie's on? It's never a movie I want to watch. Of course. With the rare exception of last weekend when Fury 7 started airing. Good. And I'm awesome. like, cool, we got something at least for two hours. Then I go to Stars, then I go to Showtime. And Showtime's always just billions, and I've already seen that because I've already watched that episode. And I don't watch Shameless. Um, and then I'm like, great, let's see what's on AMC. Never anything I really want to watch with the rare occasion, exception of Trading Places starring uh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. Uh, and then I'll just keep going down and eventually probably just land on the Velocity Channel where it's some dude you know, fixing up an old Mustang. It's like, I got this Mustang. It's got rust on it. Here's how we're going to fix it. And I'm like, oh, someone's making something. Cool. And I'll watch that. My wife will get up and go in the other room and I'll see her for the rest of the night. Um, DVR, bro. Go through I it. do DVR, but, you know, I have like four arrows. I don't want to I don't want to watch it anymore. I know what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. I have all of Legends of Tomorrow and I'm like, I don't really want to get into that because it's just going to be a Monster of the Week thing. Sure. Um, and I'm still watching Flash and I'm still watching Walking Dead, which is great. And I'm watching Billions, which I think is actually a pretty good what show. What about Vinyl? Did you watch Vinyl this week? No. I, I DVR'd it. Eventually I'll try it. Yeah, I mean, my thing if is... people like it, I guess. It's it's. I feel like it's just... Because of the constraints of network television and to, to a certain degree cable, right, where they still feel they need to make a product a certain way, I feel like everything is just really bland and boring. Yeah. And like I was telling Tim the other night, like I I, I, it, I finally came to the realization that I'm like, for the first time in my life, I actually sat in front of my computer and was like, I'm going to see what's on YouTube. I'm just going to, I just have this craving to Google something on YouTube. Well, YouTube search something on YouTube, I guess. Could you call it Google search? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Search something on YouTube and just see what comes up. And I was, because I've been fascinated lately by um, uh, by the Gracies, who are this family that basically uh, made modern jiu-jitsu or Brazilian jiu-jitsu for what it is. And they brought it to the United States. And it's a fascinating story. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to look this up. And I started going down that rabbit hole and ended up watching what I thought was a clip which was actually an entire hour and a half long documentary called Choke about Hicks and Gracie. It was one of the most fam- more famous of the Gracie's families. And I was like, shit, I've been watching YouTube for two hours almost. And there's just something exciting about that to me that I don't, that's just, there's something, there's something better about that experience to me that I, I feel like it's, it's, uh, I'm not wasting any time because the second I don't like something, it's boom, click away, get to something yeah, else. You find, find something you exactly really, really like, you want. exactly what you want, right? And um, yeah, man, it's I, I can't even remember actually watching TV. And it's it's weird because like so much of these things just blend together for me at this point where it's like internet video. What's that even mean? Like, where's the line? I haven't watched anything on a TV. I don't even remember when I watch it on my computer. Mm-hmm. Granted, my computer is a giant screen, but... It's uh, like three giant screens. It, it, you look like, it looks like the array from Swordfish. And it's fucking awesome. When but Hugh Jackman's getting the, the hand. The oh, no, that was at the table. Sorry. Like Walking Dead, Game of we Thrones, those the aren't TV part shows part to me, <laughs> even though I know they are TV shows. But it's like them being made, like the way they are being made, it's it's not, you know, held into all the bullshit of network and all that stuff. I mean, even Walking Dead is to an extent where it's like they don't go as far as and Walking Dead's the worst could. offender, I think. Now... It's a great show, but this bullshit of like, hey, let's do a mid-season break. Hey, let's space this out. Hey, let's keep... Fuck you. Like, I'm super into this. I don't want to wait six weeks. It ruins my emotional value. Now, you guys said it was... I haven't watched the episode from last week. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure I'll get right back into it and eat my words. But at the same time, watch something like um, House of Cards or like Luther or Justin anything. Jones. Or like the, um, the, the great work that Benedict Cumberbatch and... Uh, the guy from The Hobbit did with Sherlock, right? Which is like BBC does. They go, we're going to do Sherlock. It's three episodes, but every episode's two hours or an hour and a half ish, right? So you're getting these awesome stories that they, that are like mini movies, but they only feel the need to do three, and boom, they put that out. And you may or may not get any more of those, which is great. There's no need to be like, 
Got to get that next season of 23 episodes out sure. uh, again. And, oh, God, what's the, pl- what's the plot going to be this week? Okay, well, okay, well, well, maybe the people from Law & Order meet someone who uh, killed someone with an axe. No, we've already done that 50 times. Shit, maybe they killed them with an axe, but the axe was up their ass when they did it, and they fell backward onto the person's head and cleaved them by accident. Cool, that's a great story. Let's get into that, right? Before you went into that really weird story, I was with you. Yeah. Of like, yeah, like even with Walking Dead this week, when it was a great episode, but it was the first 10 minutes was like reacclimating myself to like, where do we leave off? Yeah. You know what I mean? They showed the previous thing. I'm walking. I was like, Oh, right. Oh, oh, right. right. Morgan did. Oh, They're walking out of the totally. house. I hadn't thought about that in six weeks. Where right. are we picking and what's right. happening? What's that character's name again? And thought that, yeah. yeah, I just feel like for me, you know, internet video, there's going to be a merging point. There's going to be a conversion point. Eventually. We're, we're already hitting that. We're already hitting so that. So for point. me, it's like, what's I don't, funny I don't is mean in, in the matter of next topic, by the way, it does, which is great. I, I don't mean that in a matter of, uh, the way they're delivered to us. I mean, in the matter of the way they're actually thought about and produced. Yeah. Right. Where it's not that big of a jump. We're not that far away from network television going, you know what? We don't, since everything's going to be a subscription model anyway, we don't have to do 13 episodes. We can do six really awesome episodes and people will just subscribe for that. Like the BBC does. I, I, I'm saying the BBC and I know they do longer form content because obviously they do like the Downton Abbey's in the world and stuff. And I'm not that up to speed on that. So I don't want to misspeak. But the shows that I have seen, they don't. It doesn't seem to me like they, they are constantly feeling that pressure of like, we got to make more episodes because we have to sell more ads during each one of these episodes because we're losing money like crazy. Mm-hmm. So I think it would be like when we talk about movie uh, shows like Jessica Jones or Daredevil, even those while they're still doing something great, still 12 episodes. There are still four episodes in there where you're like, sure. come the fuck on. Like the Tormented Soul episode, the B story plot with the cop and the girl. I'm like, oh, fuck it. no one cares about those people. Get back to the main story. Tell me the story. Give me the B story of as as it needs to come and let's get the hell out of this. When thing. they were in bed, I cared a lot about them. That was a hot F scene. I've never thought of anime as a TV show. And I think that's the other thing for me is like, since I've always watched it just on the internet, like to me, that's, I count that as internet video. But I guess to some people it is TV. But like, since we're not in Japan, it's. Sure. It's a weird, weird thing. But like, there's so much to me that I'm like, this, this, it's just not TV. And like, they don't, they don't really follow the rules, at least not the good ones like that. So I don't know. It's, I think this list is like going to be totally different eventually where well, it all is the same shit. Like, uh, what is the difference between a movie or a, you know, three part thing that it's equal to the same amount of time if the story is being told in the exact same way and you binge watch it? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, with movies, they're doing like, I think they're experimenting a little bit more. Um, cause with movies, you have a different, you have a lot more freedom, I think. You don't have to necessarily do what you have to do with TV because you're, you're, the revenue model is completely different. But uh, I would say, I mean, yeah, my when I'm talking TV, I mean, I, I, what I'm really talking about is like American television. Obviously, I've watched anime where I'm like, this doesn't make, oh, I like this because it doesn't make any sense. But I think they're going somewhere. Like Death Note is a perfect example of a show that's like, that that just couldn't exist on TV. Yeah. Right. For I don't want to spoil it, but for some of the, you know, some of the character arcs are just like, whoa, all right. Like yeah. there's no way that would fly on TV. It would have to either be H. It had to be HBO, really. Mm-hmm. HBO is only uh, they're crazy enough people to actually do something like that. Um. Anyway, good topic. Sorry. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. What's your topic? Uh, I was at dinner the other night with uh, my good friend Stu and his wife. Your buddy Stu. My buddy Stu. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, you guys all know Stu at this point. I know of him, and this is uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> good friend Stu and his wife, and we were talking about. Just the difference in generations. Um, and it reminded me of a topic that I uh, that we have talked about before on the show, um, the singularity, right? We were talking about how people are glued to their phones. And she was arguing that there will be eventually a point where things bounce back, um, where people kind of revolt against that, which I always feel like is the idealistic way of looking at things. But the reality is, and this is what I was trying to tell her, I was like, we are headed toward that conversion point of, you know, when they're going to be able to put chips in our brains uh, to regulate hormones, to regulate different things, to regulate dysfunctions, to help with Alzheimer's, to help with dementia, things like that. Um, and then I randomly read an article on Wired where a guy was trying to hack his own brain and like went down to Belize to to um, have a brain surgeon put like wires and copper wiring and stuff in his brain and it, like totally messed him up for a little while. But I guess he's I guess he's okay <laughs> for now. a little while. <laughs> yeah, I mean like well, <laughs> he bounced back. They were like he he was they having just restarted the system. <laughs> well, he was having problems. <laughs> Hit it a couple times. I'm reading as I'm reading this article, I'm like, holy shit, this sounds terrifying because he was uh, it, they they eventually figured out it was because of the brain surgery that the brain had swollen and because the brain swells, you start losing some of the cognitive functions. Eventually, mm-hmm. it came back to him as the brain as the swelling went down, he was able to get it back. But for instance, he would say like, hey, have this pencil. And you'd be like, that's a pen. And he'd be like, yes, pencil. You know, like shit like that mm. where he would just say, sorry, 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 because he couldn't form sentences. Mm. You'd ask him a question. He'd be like, Gah. but 
What's, that's literally that's in the article. But what's fascinating about this is it's all going towards something, right? Eventually, they will figure it out. And they 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 talked about um, the uh, Colin. I think you read the story. The science. The guy that there was a neuroscientist that did to a bull and was able to actually have the bull stop and like turn around. Bullshit. And then there was another story of uh, uh, how you can do it to cockroaches, where you can actually like tap and like put electrodes on cockroaches and, and actually steer them. That's crazy, right? Yeah. So my question to you guys is, we all know it's coming. Would you, in your lifetime, consider doing this? You wait for the S version. You wait for the S version? You wait till Apple does it, and yeah. then you do it? I wouldn't yeah. do, yeah, I wouldn't do Gen 1, but I would I would totally be open to it. I'd want to. We're, we're going to, I mean, the reality is, you know, this goes to what Ray Kurzweil talks about a lot, and people should read his stuff because he's a, he's a futurist, and... Futurism is like is is fascinating stuff to reach read about because it's it's a, the idea of it's not a it's not a sign it's not supposed to be science fiction it's supposed to be like what do we really think is going to happen right and so these guys like look at this and I think Ray Kurzweil thinks the singularity is in twenty forty five I think it might even be sooner than that and I think he might even um, I think he'd be as soon as the twenty twenties um, you think so yeah like but, and, and, but not but, in the form of like man merges the machine and then Skynet happens right no because that's like, not what that is like Skynet's AI so like that's 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 different and AI is dangerous and like the, th these are things that um, you know AI is something that even like Bill Gates is starting to talk about being like and Stephen Hawking and 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 um, you know a lot of these kind of you know uh, phenomenal technological minds are being like we should really be careful what we're doing with the AI mm -hmm. um, but that's different theoretically and technically than the singularity. The singularity is the idea of becoming a cyborg, of becoming right. of of which um, I love that name. I love the term cyborg because it was it's so eighties, and you're like that's never going to happen. And eventually, we're all going to be it's cyborgs. Just, it's the literal <laughs> it's the literal merging of technology in like a substantial way. So, I think that these things are going to start happening like in the 2020s. Um, I think that like you'll start people are going to start having like kind of heads up displays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think they're going to actually be implemented and, like, into their eyes, or will it? I mean, probably. obviously, it'll start with. I mean, that's that's the thing that comes down to me, right? Is there already like when you start thinking, OK, there's going to be one day where they put a chip on our brains and that's going to be our cell phone. Right. That sounds crazy to me. But when you start saying, hey, they're going to put lenses into your eye that never have to leave. Right. Well, they're already doing that. Right. Like you can go get permanent lenses affixed to your eyes now if you have problems like that stuff is exists. Unless I'm I think I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I just I found right out this that. week that there's contacts that you can leave in all month. Yeah. I did. So not know that. So that I think is what's what you're talking about, right? Well, that's where it's more likely going to be, where it's like it's not. I don't think going to be this grand like nothing, 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 and then boom, boom, here's the chip that logs you into the net, and you don't have to leave your house anymore. It's the gradualness of yeah. it, and that's what's terrifying to me is that like I bought. I mean, I'm I'm a late adopter of everything. You know that I still have a fi iPhone five S, and it's still rocking. The new update works wonders for it, but. Like the newer generations, people are like, cool, a chip that I put in my brain, I don't need a cell phone anymore. I can just be like, beep, well, that's boop, a, boop, boop, that's Snapchat a, people. And, I don't you know. like to do that. This, yeah. is, this yeah. is the thing is that there's going to be, I don't agree that it's going to be gradual. I don't think it's going to be gradual at all. Because I mean, I think, gradual I, in the span of like 20 years, yeah, not like, like one day, boom, here's the piece of chip sure. that like, like the fuck. glasses thing still isn't even a thing. Like, but you that, figure, that's, well, the that's the whole thing with Google Glass, right? Is that Google Glass Gen 1, that looks stupid. Fuck it. Google Glass Gen whatever, where it is, well, that's any I think frame the you want. Comes, exactly. And then it'll be lens and then it'll be implant. Yeah. There's, but think about it this way. Like, it, I, we've talked about Baker's Law, I think it's called, and stuff like that. The idea that I think every 18 months, the uh, processing power multiplies by two, right? Mm -hmm. And this has been true for decades. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Um, And we've talked about it in the past, but like 10 years ago, the most primitive version of this phone you didn't even know would exist, right? Yeah. And now this is where many forms farther away from the one that came out in 2007, and it's a part of everyday life in the first world, right? Yeah. And even in developing countries. This device changed the world, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, ch it changed everything. He's and up his phone and uh, I was going to say it's a remarkable. His iPhone, but everyone like just assumes Uber, that. Uber, for instance, changed the way we interact with a sharing economy, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, really came up with one of the ones to come up with the idea of the autonomous vehicle. The autonomous vehicle was something we were hypothetically talking about two years ago. They're like really close now to that. Like mm -hmm. there's, it's only a couple of years away from Apple probably revealing project Titan and these other you're companies. You're talking about putting, a vehicle that just, just driverless drives itself. comes in up to you years, and picks you up and you're like, In 10 years, I was just listening to the thing on NPR about this. In 10 years, like they're like, these things are going to be everywhere. Now, like a year ago, we didn't even think about it as more than a hypothetical. And they're like, in 10 years, you probably won't even need to drive a car ever again. You know what I mean? That's if perfect. You don't want to. My car will last that long. That's um, awesome. Like, the, like, so what I'm saying is that, like, oh, these get a new things, car when it comes. I can, yeah, I can, I can drive, space it out ten years. Yeah, absolutely. The Honda. So what happens is that these things like snap into existence like this, right? Like yeah. the 
the mainframe post World War II computers that could barely run anything that used ticker tape and all this kind of stuff to like give feedback and punch cards turned into smaller room size computers that were at universities that might have had like a, a interface on some sort of small screen or an oscilloscope that turned into Apple One, which was a thing that was pre- presented a homebrew fucking computer club at Berkeley in the mid 70s, which turned into Apple Two, which was a computer many times more powerful than it, which turned into the Macintosh, which turned into like all within the span of 25 years. Yeah. Before you knew it, you had this. Right. You know well, what I mean? More, which more, is, which more. is literally probably one billion times more powerful than the Apple one. Right. You know, it didn't take that long. Like this thing is smaller and more compact and more useful and more mm-hmm. ubiquitous. It has more utility than anything we could have ever imagined. 15 years ago, no one had any idea that this was going to happen. And so all I'm trying to say is that, and by the way, we had cell phones 15 years ago, 20 or 25 years ago, but mm-hmm. no one knew it was going to turn into this. Mm-hmm. We all thought we were stuck with those little tiny keys. On the what bla- it on requires, the mm-hmm. what this whole requires, what the idea of futurism, I think, and like the futurist kind of like mentality of like just reading this kind of stuff is you have to have smart people that have vision. That was what Steve Jobs was. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what um, Elon Musk is. These guys have vision, and that's a really rare thing to have because this technology is here. The ability to do what we want to do, the ability to go to Mars, for instance, is possible. We can do. We could have done it forty years ago. Mm-hmm. It's going to take someone to be like, well, maybe we should. Maybe it should be a suicide mission, like someone to just like cross the gap and be like, well, how do we actually make it happen? How does it actually happen? What is the? What is the? You know, when Steve Jobs went to Xerox and stole the mouse and the GUI and the Ethernet cable and all those kinds of things from them, they had no idea. They were sitting on that stuff for years. Go, people should go read about the Xerox Alto and the Xerox Star. These computers in the 70s were what the Macintosh would be 10 years later, but they had no idea what to do with it. It takes like someone with vision to say like, oh, a, ma- a mouse? Like you don't have to use keys? Like you use your hand on a trackball and it yeah. clicks on things? And these guys are like, yeah, we invented this 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right. Well, they like, like, like we're going to like, I see what this actually is. Right. You he was don't. the one that said, I'm going to take this and go and, 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 and pair it with the user interface right. that works for it and put it in living rooms. Right. Like, that's just something that, and that's something that I wish I had more of, obviously. Everyone wants to be more like Steve Jobs, but like, I, I can't draw those parallels. Right. Like, that's why I'm such a late adapter for everything where I'm like, um, you, I look at these things and I'm like, I just don't need this. I don't need the next generation. Of yeah, it. You and you're holding up an iPhone five. I mean, to be fair, Tim's is the most powerful at the table, right? Sure. It Kevin is. would argue that his is many more times powerful, more powerful. That's, if, a, that's when the it turns point. on of the, the thing is, is that like at Xerox at, at zero, people should read about Xerox. Um, uh, Paul out park. It's called P A R C Paul Alto research center. Really remarkable place in the sixties and seventies, what they were doing. Mm-hmm. These guys in the mid seventies had fucking computers with graphical user interfaces connected to the internet, like an ether, uh, an intranet sending email to each other in the seventies. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And like, they had no idea what they were doing. Like, yeah, they, but- and, and like the guys that were getting really frustrated, a lot of those guys ended up going to Apple getting poached to make the Macintosh and the Lisa, which is, you know, another computer people can read about. But like the, the, the point is that this technology is like latently sitting around a lot of times and it just takes someone with a little bit of vision to say like, what can we do with this? And that, that's why I, that I'm bringing it back to, you know, more cyborg technology or chips. Like we're not going to, you know, we are going to meld one day with machines. Our generation is going to see what it looks like to have a person and a machine be 50, 50, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And that's not necessarily like what we're, what we're talking about, we're not also talking about machines, which is a whole other thing, like robots and AI and stuff like that. That's a whole other thing there. Like people can read about what Google's doing. Um, no, but I mean like with with, with their company in, in near MIT where they're making like autonomous like robots that think and move. And that's like a whole separate fucking that's way more dangerous than what we're talking about with the with uh with cyborg technology, or whatever way we're putting chips in our heads. The idea of like turning your brain data into computer data mm. of backing up memories of like doing all sorts of like weird things like how can you do this like people are researching this kind of stuff it's fucking fascinating is it going to work no but it's going to take someone that's it's probably an existing technology that someone's going to have to be like wait a minute turn it like yeah like all right we all we've been sitting on this for years like this will actually work like google glass if someone were to come and be like this is what's actually cool about it yeah exactly as opposed to it being creepy and you wear it and you're fucking filming people it's like can we can we well, like, I hope that functionality is still there. <laughs> can we have like a heads up display of some sort that like is useful to us? Like that's not right. just like a video game thing. Can we have um your health? Be you great know, if it were the health bar. You're like, you need a power how bar. How tired oh, you yeah. are? Yeah, like what do you need to eat right now? Like what is it mm-hmm. that you need? Like what is your body missing? Like, is there something that like it can tell well, you? That's, like you need to go to sleep. Like your body will be the twenty five percent better tomorrow if you sleep at this time to this time. Like there's it's just it's weird things like Ray Kurzweil's, you know, ambitious goal of uh, or, you know, thought of it getting to there by 2045, I think is like is, is selling it too short. It's a shame because 
the, the, the scary thing about it is that we are on the cusp and I read a lot about this stuff where like we might be one of the last generations of like really pure human, mm-hmm. you know, like where soon we're like going to be able to, I mean, we're already able to do it. You can tell if someone's sick, if they, if maybe they're going to have down syndrome or something or something like that. Like you can do all these tests in the embryo, mm-hmm. but like what happens when you can really straight up go into a doctor's office and you can already kind of do this, I guess in the, in the main, but like where normal person would be like, the baby's going to have blue eyes. It's going to be a girl, you know, mm-hmm. like. It's going to have, it's going to be a brunette. It's going to be predisposed to these things. And like, well, they're going to be hot. They can do, I mean, the, the shit they do with like when, when people go in for, um, what is it? Uh, to, drug testing. No, not, drug t- not randomized drug testing. Um, fertility testing, right? When they go in and they'll take eggs, they already sort of do that, right? They'll, they're, they're able to look at a grouping of eggs they have and find the strongest one that has the, the best shot of like weeding out those the shittier traits but i mean like i think they can do it already right can't they go in and look at genes and actually like yeah they can it's It's illegal but they can do it right exactly like engineering like that is not like this is where bioethics and shit like that comes in this it's going to get like Mm. super complicated in the coming in the coming decades because we are going to get to a point a convergence point with the machines and we are going to become with technology and with the internet and with and with constant connectivity but we're also going to come to a convergence point where and this is like the more interesting thing like where we may never die Right. You know, like, like you we're getting to the point where like somewhere. you can clone. It's not like just a matter of like taking a heart from someone else putting in you. Like you can clone your own heart. Right. Your body won't know the difference. Yeah. You know if, what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like it, it, it's. Are we meant like we're getting to a point where I've talked about this a lot in the past and this isn't a unique idea, but like where humanity is, is unique because it's, out, it's the only thing that outsmarted evolution. Mm-hmm. We know exactly what we're doing. Like we know like our nutritional standards and our ability to have entertainment and all these things in, in, in only a few thousand years made us from cave dwellers that lived for 25 years, if you were lucky, to people that can live for 100 years and can outsmart all sorts of diseases and all sorts of dangers that our cave dwelling ancestors mm-hmm. and our primitive primate ancestors could never have ever dreamed of, of doing. And like, so it's like, what does that look like when the earth has 25 billion people? That's on the it? problem. It's not calling you know? the herd anymore. Right. The overpopulation well, will get to be crazy and we'll all fucking be in a horrible, horrible place. But we're going to get a lot of likes on our Instagram pictures. We're gonna That's true. Likes. We're going to fucking crush it. The, the ironic thing is that this outsmarting of evolution is the reason why we're probably not going to live forever, like as a species, because we're too smart for our own good. Like we don't know how to live in symbiotic re- in a symbiotic but relationship see, with our planet. We don't know how to live in a symbiotic relationship with each other. So adding more and more on. Remember, like it wasn't that long ago where, you know, I was reading about the Roman Empire, um, you know, and really like the, the Roman, like the post Republic era. So like you're talking about like 300, 400 A.D. They have controlled 20 percent of the population of the earth, which was only like 75 million people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Empire, yeah. Like there are. 7 billion people on the planet. It's going to go up to like 10 billion in like in a, in a decade and a half or something like that. And then like on and on and on and on and on and on. And it's like, a, it's a, it's an interesting thing about like the, the death of us might've been that we were too smart, you know? But like, see, that's where I think this comes in, right? When I think about how I would use this, like my first instinct is like, no, absolutely not. I'm scared that someone would hack my brain and like be able to take over parts of my body or functions of my, my, my body where like I'd never be able to get it up anymore, right? Or something like that. Like if Kevin that's had what the, they do when they hack you. If, if Kevin, Kevin had, had the you code, would always be hard. I, I would walk around and just be like, ah, it's <laughs> chafing. I have to. I'm sorry, guys, and I would just have to pop it out. Dicks the up. Dicks <laughs> up. Suns out. Guns out. Um, but then I think, well, how awesome would it be though? Because like I use a fitness app, right? When I'm so inclined, when I'm feeling like, okay, I need to lose weight or be healthier, I will log my food and my exercise in to the best of my capabilities. But I can only go so far with that because I really don't know what's in, how much uh, caffeine's in here or how much sodium is in the, the the sandwich that I just ate or the meat that I just ate, right? But if I had a chip in my in my brain that was analyzing all that and feeding me real-time data of saying, hey, you need more sleep, you need more uh, uh, vitamin A, vitamin D, whatever that is, to reach stasis, um, I think that would be really, really cool. But taking that a step further to talking about the overpopulation problem, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Trying to stop and I couldn't. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing because I couldn't stop laughing. Go, oh, okay. oversaturation problem. Uh, but think about when you talk about the over uh, overpopulation problem, like imagine if that chip could, chip could also regulate uh, birth cycles. Yeah. Right? Or imagine if you could just turn it off. So yeah, it's like, I don't want babies. I don't, I don't want babies. Or you can just off. copy and paste yourself. But what, but what this comes, what, what, what this comes Which down people to, would, that's what Colin's talking about, right? So there would not need, we wouldn't necessarily need to to procreate anymore because we would live forever. When you're talking about immortality, like why would anyone need a kid beyond that point if they could live forever? You just wouldn't. Like some people would, of course. Like, hey, I want to bring more people into the world. But people like us would be like, 
I mean, they knocked it out of the fucking park first try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are they going to, what are we going to iterate on? It's not going to get any better. Maybe taller. It's Hold just, my body. Download my memories. It's fascinating to think about all of the more totalitarian, dystopian, like, uh, notions that this kind of stuff brings up about population control, about control of governmental agencies. If the internet can connect to your brain, what, the, what's that, what stops them from controlling you? Like what stops them from hacking you? Like what, like, the, you know, like I know that for a fact that like, you know, I've read about, I think it was Uber that like is, is is paying hackers to try to hack their autonomous vehicles because they know that people are going Someone's to gonna fuck do with them. Well, no, there you was know, that story like, about like, the reporter that got that they think that the government hacked into his Mercedes Benz and throttled it, so he fucking rammed into a tree. Did you hear that? Yeah, I mean, this, these yeah these theories have been going around since since computer chips entered the the car wall. These yeah. kind of like the idea is that like with, with the tech the, the, there's a there's a uh, uh, convergence of also technology with like control. That like the more we give into machines and the more we give into like a centralized kind of thing, the internet, you know, the internet was invented in the main by the American government. And again, it wasn't until people saw the the utility of what it could do in the World Wide Web, which is different than the internet. And that's why people get confused saying like Amer the American government didn't invent the internet. Yeah, it did. The But the World Wide Web, which is what we know as the internet was invented at CERN in Europe, because they saw many years later, like how can we actually really use this beyond like scientific or educational or mm -hmm. Usenet or something like that, like or emergency, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like like we can use this for more practical reasons. And so you know, the World Wide Web is something that runs on the internet structure that was made many decades ago. And the more the internet, like the more the internet is laid down, and the more we are connected with each other, the more control we give up. It's like a really weird kind of thing, but like in 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 terms of like humanity, in terms of like what we're doing to the planet and doing to ourselves, like that's why I say like when people were talking about like we need to like look to the stars now. You know, like that's like what we really should be doing. And it's not a matter of like of like just being interested in space. Like we got to get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it should be like a, a, pro a national and worldwide get priority. Our, get our asses to, to Europa. Yeah, like, call it a day. Because it's going to take hundreds of years for us to really figure this out. And right. like the, and every day we wait is a day like we are, are wasting time on a planet that will not be able to say, sustain this race for much longer. And it's not like a doomsday kind of thing. It's just to say like humanity could live forever if we're just smart enough to get the fuck out of here. Right. You know, and like in 500 years, we can colonize all these different places and, and experiment and do all these kinds of things. But oh, I thought you meant colonize. Yeah. No, that's what we're calling it from now on. Yeah. They're calling it colonizing when anyone does anything like the earth. The <laughs> earth will not be able to sustain 15 billion people, which is what's going to happen mm -hmm. to it in only maybe a century. It's not going to happen. You know, there's not enough water. There's not enough anything. For us to like to sustain as many people and so it brings up all so i guess what i'm saying is i'm rambling but what i'm saying is that like it brings up all this question of cyborg or convergence or singularity brings mm -hmm. up all these ancillary political and scientific and explorative and all these different questions that we have to answer it's, it's not just about the technology and how cool or interesting it is it's like what does it mean for us right because we are going to look very different as a species in a society in a hundred years if we're still fucking here at all yeah because you have you to know, think right like for the last how many thousand years have human beings basically been the same, right? When you think about it up until now, human beings have essentially just been what you're looking at right here, right? Different. We had, be we have better medicine. Now we have better nutritional standards. We know more. That's why we live longer. But for the most part, you're not talking about a, a group of people 3000 years ago that would have been vastly inferior to us from a physical and mental standpoint. No, I mean, we're bigger and smarter, but that's, that's basically it. The, the, the thing is the, the point I, I was bringing up is that like cavemen, in the Stone Age or whatever, had a, they focused on survival, right? Like, they had to survive. That was all they had time for. I'm sure they had entertainment. They were painting on walls and stuff like that. They had a lot of time to themselves. But they were they were attached to the day-night cycle, and they were attached, which they, you know, they only overcame when someone figured out how to harness fire. Mm -hmm. And, like, they basically didn't have time for entertainment. They didn't have time to think. They died quickly. The next group of people came. They died quickly and so on and so forth. And then with, like, animal husbandry and with agriculture and all that kind of stuff, people started to be like, well we can raise cattle and like plant wheat and do all these kinds of things and outsmarted the system for the first time really. And right. we're like, okay, we don't have to hunt and gather and we don't have to like run around the plains and we don't have to do all these kinds of things and follow the herds. Like we, we can just, cow. we can just be stagnant. This is when like villages and towns and cities started to come up and then people were like, we have free time. And that's when they started looking up and realizing like astronomy is a thing. And how, how does this whole system work? And how does the natural world work around us work? And then they started making real games and entertainment and all these kinds of things and slowly outsmarting the system on and on and on until we get to this point. And like now we're here and now we've outsmarted the system to such a degree that it might become destructive or like it, might become so, it might become transformative. And that's that's what we're talking about here. Right. Is that 50 years from now, we might you might look or 100 years from now. Surely you'll look back and be like human beings from the year 2000 to the year 21, I guess, 2100. 
um, are vastly different than they were from the year 2000 to the year like you know 339 BC or whatever it is. Yeah, it could um, be. like that whole span, which is fucking crazy to think of, like 2,000, 3,000 years, could be made up and shot past in the next 50. Sure. Even when you look back at you know 1900, you think talk th- talk about what people were doing, how they were spending their time, yeah, how how the world looked. I just mean like, but yeah, but I even know what like, you mean. But you take someone out of 1900, you put them in now, they're going to be able to exist. But you take someone from now and put them 100 years from now, and they're going to people are going to be like, where's your fucking cyber eyes that shoot lasers through people if they try to attack you? And you're like, what? That's a thing. And well, that's that's the more interesting thing. And this is where it gets more in sci-fi or just like good fiction is like there are going to be massive swaths of people that resist. Mm-hmm. They'll yeah. die. Like and and we'll like killed. it's gonna have it's gonna have or like in, or put in cages. Well, it's gonna have like religious connotations. It's going to have. It's what I always say about like when we discover aliens. Like I think that's it for religion, right? Like when we finally get contact mm-hmm. or we find something. Like is one of those Dyson. What does it mean? Floating. What does it mean? Yeah, like when we when we realize that there's a fucking Dyson sphere on a star we've been looking at, and we're like, okay, well that's fucking really scary. Yeah. Um. But and cool and awesome. But it's not scary. It's fucking awesome because if they have the technology to build the Dyson sphere, they're like, we see you. We don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck until we have to give a fuck. Independence Day too. Yeah, we exactly. always knew they'd come back. It, it just, it just, just I just love the, I just love the idea that this brings up of, <laughs> of, so of people wanting like pure human about like the idea of like being like we don't want this shit. No in sense. Us. Like we don't like yeah exactly like almost a Fallout Four kind of thing where it's like we don't want to do this. Like this isn't who we are. Like mm-hmm. are, is it going to create new cults and is it how is it going to deal with religion and all these kinds of things? It's going to create massive wars and the wars are going to be unequal because a lot of people might not adopt this technology. There's a lot of like interesting questions to be asked about mm-hmm. this that it's so much more than just the fascination with the technology itself like there are significant socio-political economic existential questions that are going to be brought up just as there were social socio-economic political and existential questions when they started planting shit when they realized like wow this wild wheat that we're finding as we walk around why don't we just put it in a field somewhere mm-hmm. and then just sit there put a little fence around it call it ours and just sit there. And that was a grow. revolution. Yeah, that was one of the greatest revolutions in in the in in the in human evolution. Mm-hmm. And we're reaching another paradigm shift like that. I think in something that is going to be just as important, just as mind boggling. It's just that we don't understand how it's going to happen, and it's going to happen way quicker than we think. You know. Mm-hmm. So um, b- so back to Nick's question: Would you put an implant in your head um, in your lifetime? Maybe. Yeah. There's got to be safeguards. I I, you know what I mean? That's why I'm saying not Gen 1. I need to believe in this thing that it can't yeah. be hacked or how it works. But that's the question, though. How would you know? You, someone, won't, you won't If someone know, hacks you and, and your arm goes up, that's it. one thing. But how do you know you're not just subversively like, fuck, Trump makes a lot yeah, of good yeah, points, I know, I know, right? I, I like yeah. that guy, actually, right? And you're like, oh, shit, my fucking brain's I've been hacked. Ah! I have the roller coaster theory. I've used this in a, lot, a ton of different ways. But if people are going to wait in line to do this thing, <laughs> it's not bad for you. Like you're gonna you're gonna be fine. You're you know it's gonna be scary or whatever, but you're not gonna die. You could die. Things could go wrong. Things could happen. Yeah, but you're not gonna. Okay. So I'll fucking put it. In. You're in. Okay. Yeah, but not Gen One, just because no. that's stupid. Come on, right? Troubleshoot yeah. a bit. And then Nick, are you gonna put the implant in your head? I think I think I would eventually, and and I think it's because we think about these things, and there will be Collins right. There will be staunch supporters and staunch, and, and people who just completely and totally revolt against it. Which is which will represent probably you know twenty percent of the population on one side, twenty five percent of the population. But that other sixty percent of I don't give a fuck is gonna be like, well, is it easier for me to just think about ordering toilet paper right now and it shows up? Fuck it, put the chip in my brain. Yep. Oh wait, I don't want to stop eating these fucking potato chips, and I just want something in my brain to regulate how quickly my my body metabolizes all the fucking insane chemicals I'm putting in it. Fuck it. Let's do it. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think like from just the sheer point of weight loss in general, the crazy shit that people will do, the pills they'll take for weight loss, the fucking nuts diet programs or like the the surgeries they have. I think this would clean up if you said, here's a chip. It's going to uh, increase your body's metabolism and its ability to process uh, carbohydrates and sugars. sugars in your bodies. And uh, you're never going to get diabetes and you're never going to get heart disease. And you're it's probably going to live to be 100 unless you get hit by a car. It's going to scrub all your... Uh cholesterol out yeah. of here all the cholesterol it's it's it, you know who knows what it'll do to your liver it'll probably kill it but whatever we'll just like to colin's point we'll just grow you another one i think i think 60 percent of the people will be like uh sounds good let's do it and the doctor's like do you want to read this brochure about all the fucking nah. horrible things i don't want to read next, next in the terms of service yeah like I, 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 cool put it in the back of my head and then the question will be how quickly will we have to uh 
upgrade that here's once the, it comes out here's, <laughs> every, every six two months. Years. Here's like, the thing. Contract. Here's the thing. I'll leave you with is I was thinking we were talking about the, we not t- too long ago whether or not it's a hoax or what we were talking about the head transplant, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like doctors were saying that one of the things that's scary about that is even if it worked, the level of insanity that would happen in that person's head is unlike anything that like we know how to deal with or like anything that we like it would be. And like, that's the other thing you have to think about is like, what do these chips do? Like how crazy might they fucking make you? Like th- these what are the things that stops working. You right. Know, exactly. Like, ah, like this is what I'm saying. Like there's, there's such, heart. there's going to be, su- this is going to be fascinating to watch. It's going to be scary to watch. It can have existential problems for our race and for our planet. Um, cause there is going to be unintended consequences and blowback up the wazoo, for up this, the wazoo. like, like for like, for th- this kind of thing. Like we have no idea what we're doing. I'm not saying it's bad because I think we have to go along with technological progress and it can help us. But right. The blowback on this alone and the unintended consequences of, mm-hmm. of see, this that's laser why, eyes. That's why I think it starts gradually, right? Like they're already doing things like that when it comes to birth control, right? I forget. I've, what, there's a coil they put in women. There's also, I think now they're giving them like a monthly shot. And I don't think it's that far from, um, I think they can actually put something in your skin that is kind of a chip that regulates, yeah, regulates the hormones the hormone. going in and out. And so it's a lot better than having anything like actually inside of you. It's just like a skin level thing. But that to me is like, that's not too far away from this future we're talking about of like, take that out, put something slightly better in. And oh, by the way, come back in six months for the S version of that. Oh, by this is the seven version, by the way. And now that that also regulates the hormones in your brain that will help a little bit more with your metabolism. Sure. And then, oh, by the way, this chip has an RF uh, fucking indicator. RF reader, yeah. We can find you wherever you are. We know what you're going on. And guess what? You're, you're a little low. Your you're a little low on these. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like, and that's, yeah, yeah. that's the gradual. Yeah. And then I it's think. like, oh, we know what you're thinking. And then future crimes, and then like all sorts. Of, like there's like super Orwellian. Oh, I'm going to. Oh, dude, future crimes is going to get me so bad. They were like, you are a sexual deviant. We're putting your ass in jail for the sake of all your friends and your business. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, future well, thank crimes you. department. Yeah, that's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this has been the Game Over Greggy Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes five, best friends gather on this table. Each bring a random topic of discussion for your amusement. If you like that, head over to patreoncom funny where you can support us. Get exclusive episodes, get early access, and just be a swell person. But if you have no bucks to toss and can't be a swell person, don't sweat it. Head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny where you get the show posted topic by topic, day by day, until the entire show is ready as one big MP3 and video for your amusement. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Greg. Good episode. It was. I told you. Worth the dollar. It was worth the dollar. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.